These are healthy birds, but not all the eggs come out the same size, and some have imperfect shells. So before they reach the supermarket, the strength of every single egg is tested. So I'm here to follow this morning's batch of eggs all the way to the packing centre. So you better go off and start laying, my lovely. There we go. Andrew Jore is technical director at Noble Foods. Here in Edinburgh, they process 1.2 million eggs a day. So he must have the X Factor. Absolutely not. It's <laughs> solid as a rock. But not every egg has so much strength, and weeding out the weaker ones is an extra big challenge. Every egg is checked and graded. This is a huge machine. It's like a sea of eggs coming up here. What's it doing? Right, well, this is the start of the grading process. Right. And the first piece of machinery here, what that's doing with the UV light, yeah. is detecting anything that's um, wet, or it's got albumin on, right. or it's dirty. It's marked in the computer's matrix as a second, and it's taken out later. Right. All eggs contain an air sac, but if it's too big, the egg must be rejected because it won't stay fresh. There's a simple test for this, which was once done by hand, but now is done by machine. We'll need the lights down to do this. OK, Just turn the lights down low. Right. Well, what we'd be looking for under this is the size of the air cell, which is found at the broad end of the egg. Now, an air sac's formed because when an egg's laid, of course, it's at the hen's body temperature, about 41, and then it cools down and then you get this little gap. And what we're looking for is a small size of air cell because the air cell will grow over time as the egg gets less fresh. So the bigger the air cell... The less fresh the egg is. Right. And the age-old Cook's test was uh, if you put eggs in water and if they float, then they're stale. So eggs are rejected if the air sac is too big. But that's not the only reason. Straight away, if I pick a selection, there's a, a huge... Egg looks like a walnut. What's happened there is the hens had some sort of um, shock or stress whilst it was producing the egg. It takes about 20 hours inside the hen to produce the eggshell and at some point it will have cracked the forming eggshell and then it carries on forming new eggshell on yeah. top, so you, you end up with this disfigured egg. But these guys here, I mean, they don't look too bad at all. They look really, really good. I mean, this, oh, there's a crack there's there. A crack there. Mostly they will be hairline cracks that aren't visible to the naked eye. These defects are incredibly difficult to spot, but they must be removed from the supermarket supply. I'd never believe they find cracks by listening for them. These detectors can hear the dull thud given off by the dud eggs. Crack detectors work by, by sound. If you get two good eggs and just tap them together, yeah. you get a nice ringing noise if it's good or a dull noise if it's broken. And on the machines, you've got sensors, and they touch the eggs 16 times, each egg, and it's listening. It's like a cotton reel with a little bobbin. It's moving up and down and listening to the noise it's making, and it's determining whether it's a good egg or whether it's a cracked egg. 48,000 eggs fail the crack test here every day. They're not strong enough to safeguard their precious contents during packing, transport and storage. You might expect all these dud eggs to be wasted. But there's a big market for this liquid egg because eggs are such a valuable ingredient in cakes, mayonnaise and other foods. So they're all processed right here in the factory. For such a simple, natural food, I'm amazed so much attention goes into making sure every single egg we buy is checked and safe.